Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this video we're going to take a look at the key features of the mandible. The mandible is the lower jawbone and is the largest and strongest bone of the face. The term mandible is derived from the Latin mandere, which means to chew. The mandible articulates with the calvaria at the temporomandibular joint. The mandible consists of a central body and a ramus on either side. The ramus meets the body of the mandible at the angle of the mandible. The anterior central protuberance of the mandible forms the chin. At this midline point, there is a ridge, the mandibular symphysis, which marks the line at which the two parts of the bone were united in early life. The mental protuberance is enclosed by the division of the ridge inferiorly and forms the mental tubercle on either side. I've just removed the other cranial and facial bones to demonstrate the alveolar process of the mandible, which extends superiorly from the mandibular body and houses the teeth. The teeth are contained within a specialised type of fibrous joint known as a gomphosis, which is a joint formed between the root of the tooth and the socket formed in the mandible or maxilla. I've just switched to a view of the internal surface of the mandible and will review a few features here. The mental spines are seen either side of the symphysis in the midline. The superior mental spines provide the attachment for the genioglossus muscle. The inferior mental spines provide the attachment for the geniohyoid muscle. I've just zoomed in and rotated the model and you can see this ridge on the internal surface which extends posterosuperiorly from the symphysis in the midline. This is the mylohyoid line and gives origin to the mylohyoid muscle. Returning to the external surface of the mandible, let's take a look at the ramus. The ramus is the large, flat, lateral aspect of the mandible. The external, flat surface provides the origin for the powerful masseter muscle. The internal surface of the ramus provides the insertion site for the medial pterygoid muscle. There are two bony processes arising from the mandibular ramus, the coronoid process and the condyloid process. The coronoid process is a thin, flat eminence arising anteriorly and provides attachment for the temporalis muscle. The condyloid process is thicker and consists itself of the mandibular condyle and the mandibular neck. The mandibular condyle articulates with the temporal bone at the temporomandibular joint. Separating these two processes is the mandibular notch, a concave semilunar depression which is traversed by the masseteric vessels and nerve. The lateral pterygoid muscle attaches to the neck of the condyloid process. The final thing to review are the foramina. There are two major foramina within the mandible, the mandibular foramen and the mental foramen. The mandibular foramen lies above the angle of the mandible on either side of the internal surface of the mandibular ramus. The inferior alveolar nerve a branch of the mandibular nerve of the trigeminal and the inferior alveolar artery enter the mandibular foramen and run anteriorly within the mandibular canal, exiting via the mental foramen. At the point of exit via the mental foramen, the nerve then becomes known as the mental nerve, providing sensory innovation to the lower lip and chin. So that concludes this quick tutorial on the mandible. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.